Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, please subscribe because it motivates me to create videos more often and if you're not new here, thank you for sticking around. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about drawing and painting stylized hair. A little disclaimer though, I am a self-taught digital artist, so the tutorials I make are from my own experience, they are not based on any definitive rules, so this is not necessarily the correct way of drawing hair, it's just based on the knowledge I've accumulated so far. So take anything I say with a grain of salt. Firstly, I will draw some simple sketches with different hairstyles and then I'm going to show you my own process of painting hair. Now I'm only going to use fine wavy hair for these examples because there are so so many types and textures of hair that it would make this video way way too long and also this is the type of hair that is the most easy to understand and practice until you move to the next texture. If you do want me to cover other hair textures though, let me know and I will make a separate video dedicated to different types of hair. Alright, so the first thing that came into my mind when I decided to do this video was a huge mistake I personally did when I started digital art. And it's the same and most often mistake I see on beginners paintings as well. And that is drawing individual hairs instead of focusing on chunks of hair or strands of hair, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't really matter that in real life hair is very complex. You don't need to copy that structure in order to achieve great hairstyles. So whenever you look at your reference and see all these separate hairs, I know you get the urge to copy those exact lines a million times, but don't do it. Instead, try to focus on the shape of the hair strands. So try to break down the whole hairstyle into simple shapes that you can play around with afterwards. And this is what I've done in all of these sketches. I chose slightly different hairstyles so I can show you multiple examples of breaking down the shapes. So with each strand that you draw, you have to keep in mind to make it make sense. I know, crazy, but what I mean is that you have to make an effort to understand the direction of the hair in order to avoid making it look flat and chaotic. And like I said, wavy hair is very easy to understand and practice with. So instead of drawing these random lines that you see in the reference, it's better to think in planes and not focus too much on the reference itself because it can be deceiving sometimes. What looks good in the picture will not look as good when you draw it. And that's why you have to reduce the details and simplify the shapes and lines in order to communicate the hairstyle that you're going for without um, all the realistic details. So this is what I've done here. I used the pictures as a guide but I kept it simple. Now I especially chose these two hairstyles that have bangs because these are the ones that people get wrong plenty of times. And I did too, of course, I'm no exception. So, once again, instead of repeating the same line over and over again, check out the direction and shape of the bangs. It's very important to learn how to understand the direction of each section, rather than making perfect lines to match the picture. As you can see here, every line that I make represents a section of hair that just makes sense. So they're not just floating around, they're not just random lines to mimic the hairstyle that we see, they look in fact cohesive. And this is what I want you to focus on. Go from big overall shape to smaller and smaller chunks of hair and ultimately add those satisfying little strands that we all love. Oh, and speaking of, be careful where you place these small details because they can be too repetitive and ruin your sketch entirely. Sometimes I like to exaggerate them and give them fun edges. So instead of the usual curvy strand following the rest of the hair, I'll do a little... Um, I don't actually know how to describe it. It's just like a more angular shape, I guess. It really works for me, I don't know, try it out. Short hairstyles are even easier to do, I think. You don't need a bunch of lines to get the point across, so they're pretty simple. Once again, going from big shapes to small, more defined shapes, taking planes into consideration, and this is where you can practice shadow separation. I will explain in a moment. 
We see them in ponytails as well. These dark gaps that separate the strands are very efficient and help to bring structure and contrast to the hairstyle. You can make them strong or soft, depends on what you want I guess. I usually make this decision based on the color of the hair so I don't really have a preference. Another thing to look out for is the relation between the hair and the scalp. You have to keep in mind that hair has volume and even if your character doesn't have as much volume, it still won't look excessively flat. Try to be careful to not cut the cranium or make it extremely big. This is something you can easily control if you draw your character bald first. You will be more aware of the position of the hair that way. Now for the shading part, I will keep it simple with this wavy strand example and then continue with the sketches. So again, taking into consideration the planes of the strand, this is how I would usually shade it. I keep the outside wave light and the inside wave dark. Lately, I've been trying to simplify my portraits, so adding a blob of highlight will do the job just fine, but if I'm feeling fancy, I take it a step further and blend it nicely for that silky look. The simplified method gives me more space to play around and exaggerate forms a lot more though, so depends on what I'm going for, I guess. Okay, so now I will explain some of the things I take into consideration when painting hair while showing the process of my last painting. This was my reference and as you can see I only used it as a guide to the overall shape, but the curls don't exactly match. I started with a very subtle gradient because I wanted some strong like sun wormed highlights type of thing and I didn't want to overdo it with multiple colors. My next step was to alpha lock the base color and start placing some rough shadows and highlights. As I said before, I'm keeping the inside of the curls dark and the outside part light. Because it was a lot of hair to render and I didn't want to spend half of my life painting this, I chose to do the simplified technique which is why you will see me do some sharp edges sometimes and exaggerate the shape of the highlights. After that, I make a new layer on top of the sketch and the base color and I start to color pick and make everything work basically. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get to the shading I have in mind. That is why you see me go back to some strands and adjust them until I get it right. This is also the part where you can use a third color to enhance some of the strands. So beside the shadow and the highlight color, I also go for a similar color to the base, but make it warmer or colder depends on what you're going for. It creates a nice bridge between the shadows, highlights and base color. And now some general things to keep in mind for any hair painting. Most of the time, the ends of the hair are gonna be lighter, while the roots are gonna be darker. I try to apply that to all of my paintings and also, it's really good to frame your character's face with darker hair. Even if your character has a really light color, like blonde or grey, try to use the hair around her face as an opportunity to create some contrast. Another thing I like to do is take the background color and airbrush some of that on the hair. I do that on a separate layer and adjust the opacity so it's very subtle. It will make the painting look even more cohesive because you include some of that environmental color to your character and make it belong. Other than that, um, try to have a good balance between straight and curvy lines. This will of course take some practice like everything else we do as artists, but take your time, try to have fun with it, try out a bunch of things and don't forget to use your intuition. No matter how hard I'm trying to explain how I paint, at the end of the day you still have to try and see what works best for you and find your own workflow. Don't stress about it, don't let the process frustrate you like I did with this painting. Um, have fun and you will eventually get the hang of it.
So yeah, that was it for this video. I really hope what I said was helpful. And if it was, please leave a like so I know you enjoyed watching my video. It really helps me out. And if there's some other topic you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below because I do read all of them. Subscribe if you like to see more videos like these. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.